Today we are performing one more experiment, meter bridge. The aim of the experiment is to find the resistance of the given wire and to find the specific resistance of the material of that wire. So now let us learn the apparatus, what are the apparatus required. Daniel cell, key, wheel stat, Resistance box, galvanometer, jockey, and the meter bridge. This is a meter bridge. You know already about the Daniel cell. Copper sulfate is the solution. Copper rod is positive, and zinc rod is negative. And the EMF of the Daniel cell is in the range of 1.1 to 1 volt. For the fresh cell, we require a very small current. So we have taken a Daniel cell here. Now this wire is the wire given to you. You can see the wire of made of some material and we need to find out resistance of this wire and also is specific resistance or resistivity. Similarly, here in this box, these are the known resistances we remove. Remember one thing, there are values seen here now, like for example, I have removed say value equal to 10, 5, 2, 2, 19 ohms I have removed. was checking and that means that this, nine, this box has resistance of 19 ohms. You can see the key here, one key. This key when you take out, it's an infinity key. There is an air gap inside. So when you remove this, the resistance is infinite. Whereas when you put this key and all the knobs should be made tight. This is the most important precaution you have to take. Otherwise, we will get the wrong readings. So, this is the resistance box. And this is our galvanometer and this is the jockey. Now, let us learn actually the design of this meter bridge. Meter bridge is a 1 meter length wire. This wire is constantan or manganese. When you pass a current for a long time in this wire, the resistance of the wire does not change because it has a very low temperature coefficient of resistance. So this wire also has high resistivity. Secondly, you can see these strips here. These are the thick metal strips and these thick metal strips made thick only because its resistance should be negligible almost zero. Because you know very well resistance is inversely proportional to the area of cross section and therefore when you can see the binding screws 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2, 3. This point I call it A point and this point is called a B point and this point is called a C point. If this is A, this also is A and this also is A. If this is B, this is also B, this is also B. And if this is C, this is also C, this is also C. Why do you think so? Because they are already connected to each other. So this point at this point it becomes C. Now, this is the first step. Now, what, what is how the connections are done? Let's see. Positive of the Daniel cell, wire comes to the A point. Means this point is at a high potential. So current will flow like this. Whereas Negative is going to the key and from the key it goes to the fixed terminal of the rheostat. With this rheostat we can vary the current. Adjust the galvanometer current. This is the variable and this is the C point. So A and C point there is a primary circuit. This is called a primary circuit. So now we are we can pass the current through this wire. Now in this gap you can see this gap. In this gap there is a wire which is unknown resistance, we have to find out the resistance of this wire. Whereas in this gap, there is a known resistance. In the middle, there is a galvanometer. We will come, we have already studied in theory section. We have compared this with the Wheatstone bridge network. Now, this whole experiment is based on the principle of Wheatstone bridge. So what does the principle says? If P, Q, R, S are in the connected as a quadrilateral, we have already learnt it, then P upon Q is equal to R upon S. This we have learnt. Now let's see what happens here. This is instead of P, I have unknown X. 
instead of q i have known r now r upon s what is it that we'll learn now so let's start with the experiment first i put on the key and this i'll keep at this end and then i touch this jockey here and i see one side deflection of the galvanometer so what i do i keep on moving it till i get full scale deflection then i touch the jockey here to the c point again i get full scale deflection on the other side means what is the meaning at somewhere on the wire i must get zero deflection that is this method is called as null method now let's see where we will get the reading so to start with we have adjusted the current and i have removed some 19 ohms from here you can remove start from 20 ohms 10 ohms at the moment i have removed 19 what i will do is i'll put on all these keys back to the resistance box except one now i'll put on only 10 only 10 ohms i start with 10 ohms now think of it what i do is i touch the jockey here i get one side deflection i touch the jockey here i get i don't get full scale so that means whatever i have removed from inside is not perfect i must get equal deflection from both sides what i do now i check where i get the null point i get the null point somewhere here somewhere at here now this reading is not correct we want the null point between 40 and 60 so what say means what if it is at 36 means this resistance is very high according to the principle p upon q is equal to r upon s we say means this resistance has to be proportional to the length of the wire that means this resistance is very high compared to 10 ohms so what i do i almost double and i check here i put 20 ohms when i put 20 ohms let's see where i get it now again i have to check the current one side but there's almost equal let's see for 20 ohms where i get the null point so at 10 20 ohms i get the null point somewhere at 45 what i will do i want 50 50 first reading i want 50 50 so i'll just check what i do is i remove 19 ohms how much i remove 19 ohms and for 19 ohms let me see what i get for 19 ohms i get i get exactly 50 pins what x upon r is equal to lx upon lr is the formula so lx is 50 lr is 50 50 upon 50 is 1 so x is equal to r So what is R? 19 ohms. So I got the first reading. I know what is the unknown resistance now. But let us not take only one reading. We should at least take two more readings to get average, and we will reduce the error. So this is the first reading. So like this, you have to take three readings and get the value of x. You know, x is equal to R into L x upon L n, and we get the readings. Three readings. Find the average. So we get the average in the range of 19 ohm. This is the first part of the experiment. Now what we need to do is we have to remove this resistance box. I'll put it off, and then what I do? I interchange the gap. I interchange the gaps. Again, we'll take the same values, and we'll take all three readings, and we get these readings as shown in the observation table. later on we'll do the calculation part and get the value of specific resistance look here now we need to find out specific resistance of the given wire you know the formula specific resistance is resistance multiplied by area of cross section divided by length length we get in the range of 1.06 meter and uh, read diameter we have to find out you know what is the instrument micrometer screw gauge we'll find out the diameter of this wire now look at this you'll find that it has got zero error and it is negative so zero of the circular scale is one division above the main scale line so the error is minus 1 into discount which is minus 
zero point zero 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 one. So meter. This is the zero error, which is negative. Let's find out the value of the diameter. See, I have introduced this wire in between the two gaps in the micrometer school gauge. We already got the error as minus zero point zero 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 one. Four zero one meter, and here I am getting the coinciding division as twenty two division. Main scale is zero. It's a very thin wire, less than one millimeter, of course, and uh, coinciding division is twenty two. And since there is a negative error, it always gets added up. So you get value as point three zero twenty three after multiplying by this count. So our diameter is zero point zero zero zero. Two three meter length we know diameter we know we'll find radius and then we'll do the calculations for specific resistance of the material of this wire. So we have got all the observations and let's calculate the specific resistance. So rho is equal to x into pi r square upon L. So rho is equal to nineteen is the resistance of the wire. Three point fourteen into zero 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 one one five square divided by length one point zero six. So you get rho equal to seven point four four three into ten raised to minus seven ohm meter.